gold. Well, that's what I've been waiting for. You better stick to your airplanes, Johnny. That I'm going to do. Oh, that I'm going to do. Isn't that nice? You'll never get me to risk my neck in little teensy things like them. All right, I'll tell you what I'll do. If this does what it's supposed to, I'll build one that'll be big enough to carry even you, Dickie. <clears throat> that I must see. If you want a good place to try it out, John, there's a high windmill on my dad's ranch. It flies well from there. Do you good to get away for a weekend, Johnny. Why don't you ask Regina to go along? She's interested in your airplanes, remember? It's a good idea. Very good. <laughs> The old buzzer, if he thinks she flies much faster. Well, a pink silk lady should be a high flyer. And the lady must live up to her reputation. Well, Nap, you're an old dog, and you've been with me ever since you were a little bitty pup. But you never saw anything like this. Didn't she fly beautifully, Mr. Logan? Well, I guess maybe it did, but. I'm not much of a judge of these things you call airplanes. <laughs> I've been around more than 60 years, and I can't say I've missed not having one either. Going up. and show them I'm right. You kind of got flying in your blood, haven't you? Mm-hmm. All ready? Uh-huh. Go. Come on, lady! Faster! Faster! Come on, lady! Faster, lady! Come on, lady! She barely broken. Is it busted? Just a wing. Oh, that's easy to fix. If I could only build a large one that'd fly as well. We will. Faster? Faster? What'll they do with the time they save? Go to more places. Meet new people. <laughs> you hear that, Nap? Aren't you going to dance with me, Johnny? I don't know how to... <laughs> well, you'll never learn if you don't try. He's saving time for folks. Oh, it's easy, Johnny. It's, well, it's something like flying. See? See what I mean? That's the first thing I've heard about flying that makes sense. <laughs> oh, just try it once, Johnny. Come on, please. Well, look, I'll be through with this in just a minute. If I had a little piece of silk to go right in here, you see? Well, if I get you the silk, Will you dance with me? 
Oh, all right. If you can stand it. Go on, go on. Who knows, maybe someday I'll want to tell my grandchildren I worked in one of your first aeroplanes. <laughs> go on, now, yes. A bit of music, Professor. You're working up to my size. Oh, we got a long way to go yet, Dickie. Oh, there's a lot of things up there in the air I don't know much about. I'm going ahead slowly and carefully. Well, that's a scientific way to do it, Johnny. I'm in no hurry to fly. Look out below! Ball flies again! Boys, I'm just getting warmed up. <laughs> and remember, lads, the dihedral plus the camera subtracted from the designs of the wings gives the dimension of the curvature of the top surface, which is why... Say that again, Dickie. I will not. Interesting way to teach physics, isn't it, Dickie? Well, it's the best a man can do without a textbook on the subject. Is it ready, John? All right, Father. Just to ease your conscience, Dickie, I'll show you how to fly it. This one is on the house, boys! How was it, John? Perfect, Father. You big apple polisher. I had it all warmed up for that flight. Is that so? I just got kind of got kind of dizzy there for a minute. Well, we'll just go down to the doctor right now and see what he thinks. It's nothing to bother the doctor with. Well, maybe it isn't, and maybe it is. There are a number of things which cause these sudden dizzy attacks. It could be a slight cerebral thrombosis. But I don't think so. It seems more like what we call meniere, an affliction of the middle ear. <laughs> then there's nothing to worry about. Not if you stay on the ground. not have another attack for months, but there's no guarantee. And it would be bad if it happened up there. Good morning, Regina. 
If you're not in too much of a hurry, I'd like a few words with you. Why, well, yes, Father. It's about Johnny. He hasn't been well lately. I haven't noticed. Yes, I know. He's an exasperating man. He keeps too many things to himself too many times. Well, what's wrong with him? He has vertigo. Dizzy spells that come and go when you least expect it. John must never fly again. Oh, no. We both know what that means to him. Flying is his only love, his great passion. Yes, Father. Flying is his only love. Well, I mean, uh, flying is, well... I... Oh, I know what you mean. Father, what can we do about it? Regina, I don't know. I was in hopes you might have an idea. You ladies are never without a word. Or, I mean, uh, you ladies are most generally very resourceful. Well, I must not let the ladies down, must I, Father? Indeed, you mustn't. That wouldn't be kosher. Now concentrate your attention on the balloon because it waves to it and is about to jump. And there it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, jumping into space at the dimensions, the astounding altitude of 2,502 feet, six inches. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the most daring display of acrobatics ever performed in midair. What did you say? I said, not good. You mean you didn't get a thrill out of that? Hmm. Well, there must be something wrong with you. There is. What? I've seen a man fly. You've seen a man do what? Fly. Uh, what did this Wonder Man use for wings? His own? An aeroplane. An aerial what? An aeroplane, a machine that flies. Now, uh, if you could fly the way he does, you could take the aeroplane aloft with your balloon and get way up, cut it loose, and fly down like a graceful bird instead of falling down like an awkward-looking bag of sand. Johnny! This is Mr. Dan Mahoney. Mr. Mahoney, Professor Montgomery. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Mahoney. Dan Mahoney. About everyone knows me as Professor LaSalle. That's my professional nom de plume. Parachute aerial artiste. Balloon jumper, you know. Never like to talk about myself, but I'm known from coast to coast as the most daring in the game. And uh, Mr. Mahoney is very good too, Johnny. I saw him jump yesterday at Idora Park. Only 2,000 feet, just to keep the crowd satisfied. Mm, it didn't seem that high to me. Of course, I wasn't watching closely. Well, just between us, it was 1,200. But that's not bad. 1,200 feet? It's really getting, getting up there, huh? 1,200 feet. <laughs> oh, I did better than that at Los Angeles. <laughs> Guess there's more hot air there. Say, is uh, this the aeroplane? You flew, Professor? Yeah, except for the second wing here. Say, I think I've got it. What? If I could take your airplane aloft with a balloon, 
get way up, then cut it loose, where I could fly it down like a graceful bird. That's a good idea. Yeah, it might be a, a good way to give this a real test. So, you know, I was figuring on taking this down to the Logan Ranch for testing during the Christmas holidays. And you're welcome to come along if you like. Bring your balloon, huh? No, I'm a cinch, Professor. Well, I'll be there with bells on. Uh, can't bring my balloon, though. Lost it. Eight straight passes. And on a four, the hard way. <laughs> Senor Montgomery? I'm John Montgomery. And I, senor, I am Pedro Pedregosa Lopez, the best vaquero in old California, I think. How are you, Pedro? What is this the padre he tells me? He says if I come here, my Jorge will fly. But this I swear, senor, if my Jorge fly, I won't be in it. No. No, what the padre meant was that we wanted a horse that would be fast enough to pull this, this machine here off the ground. Ah, then my horse, he stays on the ground, no? Oh, yes. Oh, bueno. Then I stay on the horse, maybe. in the world that was ever run over by an aeroplane. Hey, look. For heaven's sake, Johnny. Give me a hand. I'm not trying to reduce, Dickie. I come in here past the favor and I just get insulted. <laughs> what is it? That gold machine. I was up in Placerville over Christmas and I found some sand that looked good. So I lugged these two sacks with me. But if you haven't got time to bother, brother, it's all right with wait me. Wait a minute. No, no wait. I don't want to be in the way. Just run it through the machine when you have time. Look, I have plenty of time right now. Did you salt this sand? Why, the very idea. Just my luck. When I take the vow of poverty as a priest, I go and find gold. Oh, I almost forgot. Father Kent and I were talking about this thing. We got an idea. Yes? We figured that if you had a balloon, you could take it up high and cut it loose and fly it down like a graceful bird. Uh-huh. And we had the good luck to find a man who's going to bring his balloon down here. Here? Of course. Father Kenton thinks you should make the flight to Santa Clara. So we could give it our moral support. Thanks a lot, Dickie. You tell Father Kenton from me that... I appreciate his confidence in me. Forget it, Johnny. We'd just like to have you around.
this is the first time the world airplane has ever been blessed. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. I'm glad you're well enough to be here with us today, Mrs. Montgomery. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. It's a pity his father didn't live to see it, too. Yes, it would have been nice. He was always so proud that Johnny had the courage to go ahead with what he wanted to do, no matter what people said. Good luck, Dan. Won't fall down this time like an awkward-looking bag of sand. You know, remember, I can always build a new airplane, but I can't duplicate you, Dan. I'm not interested in a facsimile myself. A thousand feet is high enough. When you hear the gunshot, you cut loose, you understand? It's a cinch. A cinch. I'd like to be going along with you, Dan. on his own now. The only way down is to fly down. his neck I ought to.
That's it. That's within Dillable Lake. Just like a graceful bird. Wow! Wow! Do you think now Johnny has proved he can build a crazy flying machine that can really fly? That he has. Oh, he flies through the air with the greatest of ease, the daring young man on the flying trapeze. His movements are graceful, all the girls he does please. As he zooms through the air with the greatest of ease. of congratulation came from all over the country. Alexander Graham Bell said, all subsequent attempts in aviation must begin with John Montgomery's machine. But you know, strange enough, all the praise and publicity didn't put a cent in Johnny's pocket. No, sir. He was just as broke as the day he first flew an airplane back in 1883. So Dan Mahoney talked Johnny into some exhibition flights at county fairs, or wherever people would pay to see an aeroplane fly. But something happened. Some thought an anchor rope of the balloon hit the plane in the takeoff. But whatever caused it, the aeroplane fell. And Dan Mahoney was killed. 